Have you ever thought about like how amazing it is that we can like heal from a cut or grow from a tiny baby into a, you know, full grown person? Yeah, it's pretty mind blown when you actually stop and think about it. All of that boils down to this incredible process called cell division happening like constantly inside every single one of us. It's like our own personal microscopic construction crew working 24 seven. And today on the deep dive, we're going to zoom right in on this fundamental process that's at the heart of, you know, growth repair, even asexual reproduction. We're talking cell division, specifically mitosis and the cell cycle. Crucial stuff for GCSE biology, right? Oh, absolutely. This is like the foundation of understanding how living things function. Yeah. And I'm the expert here, ready to break it all down in a way that'll make sense and hopefully stick with you, you know, not just for acing those exams, but for understanding the amazing world inside you. Perfect. So let's jump right in. Imagine a cell. It's about to do the most important job of its life, splitting itself in two. Talk about pressure. But this isn't some random messy breakup. This is like a super carefully choreographed sequence of events with checks and balances at every step. Absolutely. We call this whole process of preparation and division the cell cycle. Right, the cell cycle. And within that cycle is mitosis the actual division part. Exactly. It's just one phase, but a super important one. So it's like preparing for like a massive event, a concert or a sports day. You don't just show up and hope for the best. No way. There's rehearsals, sound checks, making sure the instruments are tuned, the stage is set. So the cell cycle is kind of like the cell getting ready for the big performance of mitosis. Precisely making sure everything is in place for a flawless show. So during this prep time, this interface, it sounds like the cell is just chilling, but is it actually like super busy behind the scenes? Oh, it's a hive of activity. It's like the backstage crew working tirelessly to get everything ready for the main event. Okay, so what's actually going on during interface? Well, for one thing, the cell is growing, getting bigger. It's also busy making copies of all its essential equipment, like ribosomes, you know, those protein-making machines. Right, the ribosomes. And mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, pumping out energy. Got it. And, of course, it's synthesizing proteins needed for all sorts of jobs. It'd be busy. But the real star of the show during interphase is DNA replication. DNA replication. That's where the cell duplicates all its genetic instructions, right? Exactly. This is the step that has to happen flawlessly before the cell can even think about dividing. I remember seeing diagrams of chromosomes, those structures that hold DNA. Sometimes they're like single strands and sometimes they look like an X shape. Ah, you're talking about the difference before and after DNA replication. So before replication, each chromosome is just a single long thread of DNA. Okay, so a single thread. But during interphase, the cell makes an exact copy of that DNA molecule. Wow. So it's like photocopying the entire instruction manual. Exactly. Oh. And these identical copies, called sister chromatids, they join together along their length, forming that classic X shape you see in diagrams. So that X is actually two identical DNA molecules stuck together. Precisely all lined up and ready to be separated equally into the new cells. And all this copying and prepping takes a lot of energy. So the cell is also stocking up on fuel, making sure it has enough to power through the division process. It's like hard loading before a marathon. Uh-huh, exactly. Okay, so the cell has bulked up, duplicated its DNA. It's full of energy. Now it's time for the main event, mitosis. So what exactly is mitosis in simple terms? Mitosis is the type of cell division that produces two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the original parent cell. Genetically identical. That means they have the exact same DNA. That's the key point. Same DNA, same instructions, same everything. This is super important for growth and repair, right? Absolutely. If the new cells weren't identical, you'd have chaos. Yeah. You know, your skin cells wouldn't be able to replace themselves properly. Your muscles wouldn't grow. Your body wouldn't function. So how does this magical transformation from one cell to two identical cells actually happen? Okay. So remember those X-shaped chromosomes we talked about? They play a starring role in mitosis. Okay. I'm picturing them. First, they line up precisely at the center of the cell, like along the equator of a tiny planet. Right down the middle. Then special protein fibers within the cell attach to each side of the X. Okay, so these fibers are kind of like tiny ropes. Exactly. And they pull those identical DNA copies, the sister chromatids apart, moving them to opposite ends of the cell. So it's like a perfectly choreographed tug of war. Perfect analogy. Yeah. And the result is that each end of the cell ends up with a complete set of chromosomes. So it's like separating identical twins, ensuring they each have their own set of toys. Exactly. The whole process is about making sure each new cell 
gets one complete and identical set of genetic instructions. It's like a cosmic photocopying machine. This equal distribution is super important then. Absolutely. It's fundamental for the new cells to function correctly. You know, a wonky instruction manual won't build a working machine. Right. So exam tip alert, always remember that mitosis results in genetically identical daughter cells. Yes, that's a key concept to lock in. Okay, so the identical sets of chromosomes are at opposite ends of the cell. Are we done with the dividing yet? Almost. There's one final but crucial step called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis, the grand finale. Exactly. This is where the cell physically splits in two. Okay, so how does that happen? The cytoplasm, that jelly-like stuff inside the cell divides, and the cell membrane pinches off in the middle. So it's like tying a string tightly around the middle of a balloon. And the result is two separate independent daughter cells, each with its own nucleus, containing that identical genetic information. So if mitosis is like carefully sorting and separating two identical sets of Lego bricks, Cytokinesis is like putting each set into its own brand new box. That's a great way to visualize it. So we've gone from one cell to two identical cells. But why bother with all this complex choreography? Why is mitosis so important? Well, think about it. How did you grow from a tiny baby into a, you know, a teenager? I definitely didn't just inflate like a balloon. Exactly. You grew because of mitosis. Every time a cell divides into two identical cells, the total number of cells in your body increases. More cells, more tissue, more organs, and a bigger you. It's like building a wall, brick by brick. The more bricks, the bigger the wall. Precisely. And it's not just about getting bigger. Mitosis is also crucial for repairing injuries. Right, like when you scrape your knee or break a bone. Exactly. When you get injured, some of your cells get damaged or die. Your body needs to replace those lost cells to repair the tissue, and that's where mitosis comes in. The microscopic repair crew swings into action. Exactly. They produce new, genetically identical cells to replace the damaged ones. So when you cut yourself, mitosis is busy making new skin cells to heal the wound. When you break a bone, specialized bone cells multiply through mitosis to mend the fracture. It's a constant process of renewal and repair. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So this cell division is happening all the time without us even realizing it. Pretty much. Our bodies are constantly growing, repairing, renewing themselves thanks to mitosis. You also mentioned asexual reproduction earlier. How does mitosis fit into that? Well, in some organisms, like certain plants and bacteria, mitosis is their main way of reproducing. So one parent can create offspring without needing a partner. Exactly. The parent organism uses mitosis to produce offspring that are genetically identical to itself. It's like creating clones. Wow, so it's like a one-person show. Exactly. And it's a very efficient way for some organisms to reproduce quickly, especially in stable environments. So we've talked a lot about cells and their division, but ultimately all this activity is controlled by the instructions in our DNA. Absolutely. DNA is the blueprint, the instruction manual for life. And those instructions are organized into chromosomes. Right. Chromosomes are like those little X-shaped structures we talked about. Exactly. Think of chromosomes as highly organized storage units for DNA. Okay, so like filing cabinets for our genetic information. And each chromosome contains lots of individual genes. Genes. Those are like specific instructions for building proteins and controlling our traits, right? Exactly. Each gene is like a little recipe telling the cell how to make a specific protein. And these proteins do all sorts of jobs in our bodies, from digesting food to fighting off infections to determining our eye color. So genes are like the individual recipes and chromosomes are like the whole cookbook. Perfect analogy. In most of our body cells, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 in total. 23 pairs. Why pairs? Because we inherit one chromosome of each pair from our mother and one from our father. Ah, that's why we have characteristics from both our parents. Exactly. Our DNA is a blend of our parents' genetic information. But you mentioned that sex cells like sperm and eggs are different. Yes, sex cells are special. They only contain half the number of chromosomes as regular body cells, so just 23 in total. Why is that? Because when a sperm and an egg fuse during fertilization, they combine their genetic material. So the resulting fertilized egg has the full set of 46 chromosomes, half from each parent. Ah, so it all balances out in the end. Exactly. But for our focus today on mitosis, the key takeaway is that it ensures each new daughter cell gets a complete and identical set of those 46 chromosomes. So mitosis maintains genetic continuity for growth and repair. Exactly. It's all about precision and accuracy. Okay, let's recap the key points before we wrap up. So a cell goes through a preparation phase called interphase, 
where it grows, copies its DNA, and gets ready to divide. Right, like a cell's version of getting ready for a big night out. Uh-huh, exactly. Then comes mitosis, where those X-shaped chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, and their identical halves get pulled apart to opposite ends, making sure there are two identical sets of genetic material. Right, like splitting a deck of cards perfectly in half so each player has a full deck. And finally, in cytokinesis, the cell physically divides into two separate identical daughter cells. Like dealing out those two halves of the card deck. And this whole process is absolutely crucial for growth repairing injuries and even for some organisms to reproduce asexually. Yeah, mitosis is all about creating exact copies of cells for life's essential processes. So remember that key phrase, genetically identical. It's the heart of mitosis. This has been an amazing journey into the microscopic world inside us. It's incredible to think about this intricate dance of division happening constantly within our bodies. It really makes you wonder what might happen if this carefully controlled process goes wrong. It's a fascinating question, and there's so much more to explore in the world of cell biology. Absolutely. In future deep dives, we could look at how cells specialize become different types. Yeah. You know, like brain cells muscle cells, skin cells. Or we could delve into the amazing potential of stem cells, those cellular blank slates that can become any type of cell. Or even look at other types of cell division that have different outcomes. So many possibilities. Definitely lots more to discover. But for now, if you're studying for your GCSEs, make sure you understand the stages of the cell cycle, why DNA replication is so vital, and that mitosis produces those two genetically identical daughter cells. That's the core knowledge. Keep that in mind, and you'll be well on your way. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the deep dive into the amazing world of cell division. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and as always, you've got this. Keep those cells dividing. And we'll catch you the next deep dive. Bye for now.